regardless of what happens, you think he wins with Tyson Fury? Uh, of course, I can always point at Junction to, to get the fight with Wilder. But what, from what I understand, Wilder and Fury have a rematch clause if Fury wins. Do you supersede the rematch? Do you supersede? That, that, I'm not, that I'm not, yeah, that I'm not clear. I've got to get some further information and some, uh, some, more, some more research on that. Are you, Dominic, are you, because I feel like we've talked about you having a mandatory spot. Yeah, I'm not so careful. Every year, I'm just trying to see what the legends are being used. Are there any guarantees for you going forward that you're getting a shot at the WBC belt regardless of, like, even when the dust settles, if the period does happen to be wild, or like, do you have any guarantees for the WBC that you're getting a shot at the show? I don't, as of yet, I do not have a, a guarantee. I'll say the fact that I have the WBC match, right? If the, the belt stays with Wilder, that's my guarantee. My guarantee is that the belt stays with Wilder. Uh, and my guarantee is on fight two. So Wilder's fighting Fury. If they got a rematch clause, that fight's going to happen before I get a chance to get the title. At that point, I'll stay busy and, and stay in shape. Uh, we'll probably take another fight, maybe fight on the end of the card. Uh, but uh, for me, the, the only guarantee I have right now is that the belt stays with Wilder. Well, what was it about uh, Carlos that made you decide, like, okay, like, I'm going to take a fight, it's been a while, let me get on TV, let me get, you know, I mean, he's a dangerous guy, a former Olympian, only lost one second. Yeah, yeah, Carlos only lost one, so like you said, he's 6'6", 230. Um, I've always been a guy that's going to take top-notch guys. I don't want somebody who's just going to come in and, and lay down or maybe fight for one or two rounds and just kind of give up on the end. Um, I, I want to prove that I've been in the gym, I'm staying focused, I don't have any cobwebs going on. Um, and on top of that, you know, why not have a, a prelim fight for a guy like Deontay Waller? Deontay Waller is also 6'6", 230 pounds. Um, might as well stay focused on, on, the, on, the, on the task at hand. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, you know, I've, been, I've been ready to fight Waller since uh, last November. Um, you know, it's, a, it's a situation that uh, yeah, I think he's going to try to avoid me as much as possible. I mean, if, I, if someone called me and said, hey, you got to fight Don in Brazil, I'm going to say, listen, we're going to push that as long as possible because I don't want to fight myself. It's just a, it's, it's a daunting task. You said something uh, before about Riddick Bowe being something that you really looked up to. Uh, I'm curious, what about Riddick Bowe? Uh, as a fighter, do you like it? Is there anything you take away from his career or from his fighting style as, a, as another heavyweight with similar, similar build and similar size? Yeah, I think uh, with Riddick Bowe, I you know, studied a lot of his fight film. Um, watched his boxing style and how, and how he carried himself. Um, I can only speak on what I saw inside the ring, of course, but for being a big guy, big broad shoulders, um, didn't use his jab as much as everybody wanted him to, but at the same time, he put his combinations together real well. Um, anytime you get a big guy like a British ball or like myself that can fight on the inside, throw body shots, uppercuts, and, um, you know, and, and they're, they're proven to be able to hit with, be hit with a big shot, um, come back and win the fight or come back and knock their opponent out, um, that, that says a lot. There's only so many things you can train in the gym for, boxing-wise. Um, and I'm saying this from an athlete that, that played other sports before, before boxing. I've only been doing boxing 10 years now. Um, strength conditioning, road work, track, speed, agility, supply metrics, it's all the same across the board, from sport to sport. In boxing, of course, now we specialize. We've got the double in bag, speed bag, heavy bag, jump rope, shadow box, things like that. Um, never once you ever sit down and have to work on your mental psyche. You never, never can you train about getting knocked down or getting, you know, you know, getting cut or physically being behind on the cars. That, that part of it is, is all mental, uh, which leads me to believe that, you know, boxing's got a lot of mental to it. And I believe Riddick Bowe at the time, he was a top challenger, if not champion, had a lot of mental confidence and understanding that he was a lot more than what people just saw in the ring. follow up to that, when you made the transition from being a football player to a boxer, what was the hardest part of that I've got to say, for me, I always keep going back to it. It's got to be the road work. Um, in, you know, in football, there's gases, there's sprints, there's you know, time plays, whatever it may be. Uh, when I was first told that I had to run a mile, I, I looked at the trainer like he was crazy. There's no, there's no way in heck I'm running a mile. I've run a mile before my life. And then as it progressively you know, went on, I was running three miles. Now I'm doing three to five miles a day. Um, but uh, I think the, the level of conditioning went to a whole other level from football to boxing. Um, at the same time, in football, You've got a team around you, and if you've got a bad play, you need to take a play off, or tap out, or go up and sit on the side of the wall, you can do so. In boxing, there's nobody to, to tag in, there's no teammate, you can't come, I can't come back to the corner and say, here coach, take my mouthpiece, you go in there and fight now. That's not how it works, it's one-on-one. -on -one.